Good afternoon and welcome everybody. I am TD. We are going to have a talk by Johan Wickland. It's going to be on no way successful de deployment of open data in public transport. It's going to be a 20 minutes talk and five minutes for questions. Thank you. So the, the program says uh, OSM, uh, but I want to change it to open data because it's more than that, it's not just OSM. So uh, I'm, from, uh, I'm from Sweden, but I work in Norway. And uh, just to start, this is my company name. It's uh, pronounced Entur, means a trip or a journey or something like that. It's an ad agency came up with it. So here we can see the, the wrong font and my name, um, Johan Wicklund data manager and OpenStreetMap guy. So <laughs> I do all the mapping. No one else understands what mapping is. Um, before we start with the real things, I want to do a little bit of backstory because in Norway we have a long tradition of collecting all timetable public transport information in one place. You can see on the side here, this is the first edition from 1869. It had all the steamboats and trains, almost anyway. And the text up there actually says, I wish we had more, which is exactly what we say now. So. And in 94, we get digitalization with a database and uh, CD-ROM version and stuff like that. 2005, uh, we had the first national journey planner online. And 2016, our company was uh, created out of a split and merge kind of thing, which I won't get into now. But the goals of this new organization, which is Intur, is to promote support uh, public transportation uh, and to do it in an open way. This is a requirement from the government. They wanted this. By the way, this is the right-wing government. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna get into it. So first of all, what do we do in OpenStreetMap? Uh, we invest quite a lot in uh, preemptive mapping. So we don't know what's, where the problems are, but we can see that there might be problems in the future. So we have done almost six million edits already. And the situation in Norway is that we have uh, open data uh, government, which is uh, actively promoting uh, uh, opening data sets for public use. Uh, this is, includes uh, the ortho photos, you can see a picture here. There's a guy kicking a football into a goal. This is in way up in the north, not in the city either. Um, <clears throat> and this, of course, uh, we use along with... Oh, this is not sync. Uh, we have road network as well. You can import that from the national survey company. And of course, if you combine that with perfect aerial photos, which are highly rectified, you can create uh, sort of uh, permanent uh, mapping of roads. You don't need to go back and fix it again. Um, of course, uh, uh, the preemptive mapping uh, means that we don't actually experience that many problems from the public. Um, there's uh, rapidity as well from us because uh, anytime we get a reaction, we can, of course, instantly edit it. Uh, as you can see, it says uh, we are running straight off the nightly export from Geofabrik. We are not afraid to use it right away. There are no snapshots. Um, and in terms of... Uh, ah, I'm a bit lost here. Yeah, so we have, uh, for example, here's a visualization which we use for uh, preemptive mapping. This is, um, it measures routing distance versus air distance. And I has used uh, map CSS uh, to visualize it. Red and green is, you know, good and bad. <coughs> um, I want to get to the problems we have with OSM. Um, first of all, complex areas, which is actually being discussed right now in the large room by the French from Paris. 
uh, and it has to do with uh, how do you walk across this complex area. You can see, if you know the cartoon, you can see that it's a highway um, pedestrian area, which is very complex, and you need an algorithm to sort of route across that, and you have the levels and everything. Uh, and of course, another problem is when you have, uh, you want to wait, like how is uh, a path uh, in terms of uh, quality for a pedestrian who wants to take a bus, and then you have, in Oslo, you might have a different situation from far up in the north, so it's difficult to map it in the same way. I think it would be easy to make a, a routing engine for a city, because you can map the whole city in a single way, but if you have a huge country, with huge differences in climate even. This is going to be a problem. Uh, discouraging routing on uh, roads is another problem we have. How do you get this routing to not go into the intersection and start using the uh, pedestrian uh, paths or sidewalks instead? It's a problem. And of course the uh, layers, uh, when we use OTP right now, it just puts the coordinates and he doesn't know which level the person is on or the stop. Um, and this is, uh, we had a talk uh, just earlier today in the small room about tagging. And uh, we kind of see that there is, oh wait, sorry. Doesn't match. <laughs> uh, so, uh, when you have OSM with the kind of free tagging and you suggest in mailing list and stuff, it creates this flexibility, but it also creates the problem that there is a bit, it's difficult to find proper documentation in a single place. It's kind of uneven, difficult to find or rely on. This is a problem for us as a company because uh, you, know, you can sort of rely, rely on it up to a certain point but in the last sort of 20% of the quality you need, it kind of falls, falls short because of the differences and variations and such. So we would like to see a more organized uh, effort from OSM to make proper documentation and more uh, singular uh, mapping standards. So I want to talk about what my company does as a whole, the bigger picture. So we have uh, a self-service point for all public transport operators in Norway. They are required by the government to deliver their data into this uh, input, along with real-time feeds, and then of course we add OSM there. This is done, we use mainly NetEx, but we also use GTFS now as a sort of backup. Then it's packaged, and then it comes out at the other end as APIs and data dumps. And the turnaround for this is about one hour, the whole thing, which we are proud of. Uh, one big part of this uh, package we have is the stop point, the stop places, which is a single point stop place database, which, which is uh, administered by these local governments who are also responsible for uploading data. We have one database so that we can avoid duplicates uh, and uh, so that, for example, a new user, new company, can simply find their stops. They don't have to map out their own stops. You just go to the database, these are our stops. And uh, the stop place database is also using the uh, ortho photos I talked about before. So when we map the stops, we also use the same uh, backdrop to map OSM. So it's always in synchronization. It's also available as an API, so there's a link there. You can get my presentation later, and you can click it, and uh, it's a GraphQL uh, script or um, API. And uh, yes, all the stops are currently being automatically imported into OSM by a user. It's an automatic script, and it synchronizes OSM with our stops. This is the uh, interface for the the user interface for the stop place registry. So you can see you can enter facilities and uh, names. And uh, the red things are the exact stop positions, which are un uh, underneath a sort of uh, lay, um, 
collecting point, like stop place. Uh, the second part of our system that I want to talk about is Open Trip Planner, because uh, we have uh, we started using Open Trip Planner based on what they did in Finland, did you translate? <laughs> so we we sort of built on their branch, and uh, now we are also building a OTP 2.0, which has NetEx input so input support and a new search algorithm, which is faster, which because Norbe is too big to use the old one. And there's some links there too, you can click on later. So I want to talk about why this is good for Norway. Uh, because, of course, it's not cheap to have uh, developers working on this, building new tools, and it's like a huge investment for the government. But this is kind of absorbed later on because what we see now is that the, uh, more and more of the major operators in Norway are starting to build their systems on top of our API instead of building their own systems. So we unify the whole thing. And uh, of course, that saves a lot of money uh, as a whole. Uh, yes, we are currently um, handing out 300 million search results per month, 300 million, and this is rising. You can see this actually graph back here that I made. <laughs> Fictitious, but it's uh, it is growing, and the more you see, like you have, the, we have the biggest one right now, in the Oslo region. They're using it, and you can see more regions like Bergen are starting to build, and it's going to snowball and get bigger. Um, so, when I said it's open data, I wanted to make a little uh, point here. Uh, it actually means that the APIs are completely free to use. Anyone here you can go to our website, find the link, and build your own search engine right now. The only thing we require is like a header, so you know that it's not a random thing. Um, and uh, as well as the open data, you can just go and get our GTFS data anywhere, anytime, I mean. Uh, everything, almost everything we have in the middle box there is open source, so anyone here is free to copy our systems, use our front ends, back ends, almost anything. And, we use open formats, so it's NetEx mainly, but we also have GTFS. And this creates for us the, uh, this virtuous circle. So the more you publish the data, the more access accessible it is, so it's visible, so you get more incentive to increase the quality and the content amount. And uh, I'm pretty much done here, so I wanted to say, I've talked to a lot of people here. I've seen and recognized lots of people. And we would love for, to have more collaborate, collaborators on our uh, development, more users for our uh, data. And uh, yeah, or just copy our stuff and do your own thing. It's fine as well. And uh, that's it for me, for now. Also, a shout out to people back home in Norway. I know you're watching. <laughs> Thank you very much, Johan, for the enlightening talk. And we would like to have questions. Yes. As many yeah. as you can. We while, still you, have time. while we do the questions, <laughs> I can just say that my slide also has all these links at the end. You can just click things. Yes. Thank you for your presentation. We have actually a next talk uh, also related to public transport. And my question is, I understand you have an open API, uh, kind of free to use, and you, have, and you publish GTFS data. But for example, we are mostly interested, and our topic will be about offline uh, routers. So my question is, do you publish uh, data which has a links between GTFS and OSM relation IDs? So it could be built in. 
I don't think we have any OSM edge information in the data as such now. It's just, it, it builds to a graph, a routing graph, and it's sort of inside OTP. But internally, you use that mapping somehow because you use, uh, as I understand, the OpenStreetMap yes, data. Yes, we use OpenStreetMap for routing. So you I have that information, that. but it's just not. Yeah, yeah I don't think published. it comes out anywhere now. Ah, okay, yeah. thank you. But it, uh, it probably could. You mentioned your data processing is fully open source. Um, have you seen cases of uh, parallel uh, use, uh, other users of your code to, for the same sort of processing, or is the main benefit of open sourcing it the transparency? Do you, do you aim for reuse, or is transparency the, mostly the goal of publishing that code? I think it's both. We, we want to have more contributors, and we want it to be transparent as well. So, what are the benefits of someone else running the system? Well, if you use, use it separately and we don't know about it, then I guess it's no benefit for us. But if you contribute, if you see problems and you point it out to us or whatever, you know, that's a good thing. We don't have any negative feelings about using open source stuff. It's just positive. But the benefit for someone else, since you publish everything already, yeah. all your APIs are public, all your outputs are public, why would anyone Sorry, um, since you publish the output already, all, all the outputs are public, all the API are public, why would anyone replicate the same system to publish the same outputs? I don't know, it's <laughs> I can't answer that. It's uh, up to uh, you. Have you seen examples of uh, other users uh, running it? Hmm? J just to know if someone else in Norway runs it also. In Norway? No, no, they just uh, they base their systems on our APIs. On, okay. They don't use our systems as such. So it's mostly a transparency thing, so that everyone yeah. can see yeah. how it's produced. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. No. I was just wondering why isn't everyone doing this? I mean, yeah, me too. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. Questions, comments? Anyone? Anyway, I'm going to be out here somewhere. I think I'm going to listen to you next. I'm going to listen to you talk, but I'm going to be outside afterwards. Okay, yeah. uh, I have an announcement to make that please, before you go, remember to leave the name tag covers so that the in the box provided in the foyer thanks everybody for attending thanks johan <laughs>